Good morning. My name is Pastor Jeremy Shines. This is I Am Loved Church. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this word. Uh, speak through these lips, through the people's hearts and their souls and spirits and minds. And I just pray that you would unfold, unravel, open up, remove the veils, that we might become like you, die with you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so... This message is going to be called Anointed to Die. Anointed to Die. It's going to be a conglomeration of all, a lot of the different sermons that I have preached. A little bit of Special Forces stuff, Delta Force, Navy SEALs. But really, um, we're called to die. Doesn't matter if you're a pastor. Doesn't matter if you're an evangelist or whatever. You know, when we say, hey, I'm going to be a Christian, what we're saying is, I'm ready to die. You know, just like joining the military. When you join the military, and I did, and you know, we deployed, and I wanted to deploy until I got to the unit, and they were like, hey, we're deploying, and I was like, <sighs> and some people actually tried to figure out how to get out of it. Some of them succeeded. Um, and it becomes surreal. It becomes like, oh, this is what I signed up for. And the same thing is true as a Christian. When we signed our life over, gave our life to Christ, Holy Spirit entered us. We signed up to one day die for Christ. Now, that's easier said than done, obviously. And uh, when we read the scriptures, you see that some of these people actually literally died for the Lord. Right? I would say more so, maybe even in the New Testament, the disciples, the apostles died for our Lord. And I think I'm getting a rude awakening to this, to be honest, because you're like, oh, yeah, I'm on fire for Jesus. Right. Until you start getting persecuted, until you start getting attacked, until you start failing and screwing up and needing his grace and all that stuff that we experience in this life and um, all that hardship. And then you start really looking at yourself being like, I don't know if I knew that I really signed up to be shot at, to be signed up to to die. I don't know if I'm ready to die. And the disciples followed Jesus for three and a half years. And they started to come to the conclusion that they don't want to die. I mean, all of them except John abandoned him, right? He was the only one at the cross. And Mary, right, the mother of Jesus, was at the cross when Jesus died. Everybody else had left. And the further you get along with your walk with Jesus, the more you realize as persecution starts to happen through pursuing God, you start to realize, I don't know if I'm ready to die for this. And I've hit those points. Like, I don't know if I'm really ready to die for Jesus. I think one of the hardest seasons that I'm beginning to really walk out of is like being liked, right? Not just by people or the world, but just being liked in the church and really having to walk that out is, I didn't know I was pursuing the attention or admiration or to be liked by people until people started hating me. And that's really tough. Until, until even some, sometimes I started hating me. I don't like the person I'm becoming because people don't like me. But that's what we're called to do. Right? And uh, there's times where I was telling the Lord like, no, I don't want to do this anymore. I have so much hate coming my direction. And it's getting progressively worse and progressively and more intense. And I'm just like, I don't know. I guess I'll tell you, not too long ago, the Lord told me, me, I'm going to die for him. But, I, but I've been through so many seasons like Peter where I denied him. I wasn't willing to die for him at that time. Matter of fact, I forsook him multiple times. Cursed him, his spirit and everything. And then he drew me back in, drew me back in. And he's so gracious and he's so patient. And here I am, and I'm just like having to contemplate, like, like literally now thinking, like, whatever happens in the world, whatever might happen on American soil, right? You might be living in a different country tomorrow. And those people that are doing, killing people overseas for being Christian are eventually might even end up here or coming out of this country to turn against Christians or our own government or whatever. Like, am I really ready to die? I've really been thinking about that, to be honest. 
for Christ, like that they tortured me or whatever. And I can't really answer that right now, but I, I, I believe that I am being prepared <laughs> for something along those lines. And that there's no greater love as our Lord died for us, but to die for him and for one another. And essentially, real, realistically, that's what he was asking his disciples. That's what he's asking his apostles. That's what he's asking of us is to die for him. That's so hard. As as people continue to sin against you, and you have to forgive them and forgive them and forgive them. That's, that's harder than shooting a bullet, right? That's harder than any special forces, Delta, or whatever, right? That's harder. I mean, this is the highest mountain to climb. But that's what our Lord is asking of us. I would say even demanding, commanding is to die having to look at myself more and be like there's so many things i'm not willing to die for that the bible teaches or or family or whatever but it's just like here i am like he's preparing us to die matter of fact our whole life whether we follow jesus or not is in preparation to die and that's the thing that we're most afraid of death right i think that's why people run to sin so much because sin you know kills you but we're afraid to die from sin we're afraid to live i really want to preach this message because it's, it's, it is about a persecution but more important it's about being willing to to, to, to die die to unforgiveness Die to lust, die to covetousness and envy, die to a murderous heart, right? I don't think we're afraid of what sin has to offer. I think we're afraid of what God has to offer. Sin is so easy, that's why everyone's doing it. Selfishness is easy, lying is easy, coveting is easy, murdering and having hate towards people is easy. But Jesus is calling us to die from those things and to become like him, selfless, forgiving. Love remembers no wrongs. I know a lot of Christians that remember everyone's wrongs, especially mine. And as I'm walking this forward, I'm, I, I really can't find any human reason anymore to continue to follow Jesus. And I think that's part of dying because I've, I've found reasons to follow Jesus for all the fleshly reasons, but then those things are being stripped from me, being liked by people is being stripped from me, right? Lusting, I'm not finding any satisfaction in that, is being stripped from me. Coveting, I don't even really want anything in this world anymore. I hate this world, it's being stripped from me, right? And it's just like, why am I doing this? My family seems like in some way or another is being stripped from me because nothing I do in their eyes seems to be good enough. Though I still try. Right? Reputations are being stripped. Everything's being stripped. And here I am like, why am I, why am I doing this? And you get to this place where you're just like, there is literally no reason to exist aside from Christ. People pleasing, trying to please parents, trying to please parent in-laws or in-laws, trying to please is just being stripped. Trying to seek money or validation, strip, strip. The Lord's stripping us. He's stripping us naked. Or at least me. I think we're all in process to that, right? And love is holy and pure, right? And the difficulty of it. How many times I wanted to give up? My phone overheated. Sorry, Facebook. This is just for you YouTube guys now. <laughs> I wanted to give up so many times. Anointed to die. You know, Jesus was anointed before his burial to die. 
That's what it means to be anointed. You are called to die. In this case, literally. In some people's cases, literally. In all of our cases, we're all going to die. But what will we die for? The greatest calling. You see, this is a military contract that the Lord's like, hey, you want to be a Christian? We're like, yeah. He's like, I'm not just calling you to die spiritually. Yes, that's what I'm calling you to do, to die spiritually. But I am calling you to die eventually, literally. You sign up to follow Jesus, you've signed up. You've just signed your death certificate. Do you hear what I'm saying? You just signed your death certificate. Jesus says, as they have treated me, they will treat you. And that's where I'm at. I, I, I think the Lord is revealing, unveiling, not just my heart, my sinful, wicked heart, but he's also revealing the hearts of those around me, the, those in the world, those in the church, everyone. And I'm realizing like we are literally walking through the same experiences that Jesus walked through. And sad to say, some people actually get to are going to experience martyr, being martyred. But all of us will get to experience death. We're all going to die. But what will we die for? The world is making, in one part, more sense and less sense at the same time. More sense in its, in its sinfulness, less sense in pursuing it. Man, I read the greats of the Bible. Old Testament and New. Prophets, apostles, even Jesus. And I look at it like, we're all going to die. It's a very sad thing. But what will we die for? Or whom will we die for? Ourselves or our Lord? I got this revelation from the Lord last night and it was like I saw through time, like he just gave it to me and it just everything splitting open and everything was happening according to the way he desired it to happen. It's happening and it's happening now, has happened and has happening now and will happen until the day we stand before him. Everything is moving towards him or against him, right? But it's all happening and he's in control. I got this revelation that he's in control of every single thing, whether good or bad, whether I go sin or whether I do something righteous, like he's already seen it all. And I got a split glimpse of that. And I think he gave me that. And he said to me several months ago, you're gonna die for me. And it wasn't like a spiritual thing, of course, right? It was like a literal thing. It was like, I'm going to look down a gun of a barrel and die, like, or be sawed in half or whatever. Like, and I was like, and, but I didn't see what it's gonna look like, but I just knew that I was like, he said, you're gonna die for me. You're not gonna die for me now, but you, you will one day. And to be honest, when I heard that, I was like, I wasn't feeling that. Matter of fact, I wasn't even looking forward to that. Matter of fact, I don't even wanna hear that. <laughs> When the Lord gives us revelation, understand he's giving us because he's saying you're ready to hear this or you're going to need to hear this because he has the insight that that's going to be kind of like an anchor for us to get us through it, to get to there. And so I believe, well, if you're telling me this, then you're what you're saying, like you said to Peter, that when that time comes, I'll be ready. I'm not going to say it could be today. Heck, somebody could walk in my backyard and chop me up in pieces, right? <laughs> Shoot me in the head. I, I guess I have to be ready, right? I don't know what the context of that is, that's going to look like. Neither did the disciples, the prophets, or whoever. But one day, it's going to happen. To some of us, martyrdom. To others of us, death will inevitably happen. Man, I thought I had zeal for the Lord. I thought I was on fire, right? In my own ability until your ability starts to go away. And that's usually when the real 
you shows up. The real you of the flesh, but also the real you of what God and his spirit put in you. I have to accept that there are certain people, no matter how much I love them, no matter how much I pray for them, no matter how much I've asked for forgiveness, they still are going to hold that against me. They're still not going to forgive me. They're still going to hate me. And it's just, it's, it's what Jesus experienced. It's what the apostles and the prophets experienced. It's what the martyrs experienced. That you might love someone so much, they'll never see it. Like God loved the world so much, they might never see it. And that's where I'm at. To be okay with that. Like we just have to be okay with that. Yes, we should still pray for them. Yes, we should still be kind to them and be gracious and merciful. But some people, many people will just never see your love or God's love through you. And I think that, you know, Jesus said to, to I, I believe, yes, to the Pharisees, but also to his church and the disciples at the time before they became apostles. He says, many things I have to say about you, but you're not willing, you're not ready to bear it. You know, our kids are not ready to hear certain things about the world. But one day they will be. There are certain truths we're not really ready to hear about ourselves, but one day we're, we will be. Sometimes we will just never be. To me, he told me, you're going to die for me one day. Literally, right? I'm like, I guess I'm ready to hear that. <laughs> because when I signed up eight years ago to follow you, and I look back at all that you brought me through, I was not willing or ready to hear that. Could you imagine like enlisting in some kind of military and they're like, hey, you sign up with us, you're gonna die. Like there's no if, ands, or buts. There's no like, well, some people make it through and they're able to tell their testimony and their life experience. You know, that could be you. Like, hey, you know, no, like this is not one of those things. This is a guarantee. You sign up, you die. That's where I'm at. That's why I'm preaching this message. You signed up to follow Jesus, you will die. You will die to yourself. You realize you will die one day. But do you also realize you might also die of martyrdom? Jesus died. He says, you desire to be my disciple? You gotta die. And that's where I'm at, just realizing, like, I'm going to die. I've got to die. Not just figuratively, metaphorically, but literally. I wasn't ready to hear that eight years ago. But I guess I'm ready to hear it now. Maybe you're watching this message. Maybe you're, maybe you're watching this because the Lord's like, hey, are you ready to die? Not figuratively, emotionally, yes, those things first, but literally, right? To be beheaded, sawed in half, crucified even, right? Shot in the head, what, are you ready to die for me? Like literally, are we ready to die? Screw, they forget Delta Force. You could pop possibly a lot of survivors out of that. They signed up. They forget Navy SEALs. A lot of people survived that, right? And they lived to tell about it. But no, in Christianity, you, you sign a death certificate when you sign up. And I think that's where we're at. Like, like we're being tested. We're being refined in this season. Like, hey, like these people are not ready to die for me yet. So they got to wait 40 years. These people are. And I got to realize that I do not love the Lord. Because that what entails is that entails forgiving everybody. That entails repenting of everything. That entails being merciful to hateful people, to be loving and gracious. That's what that means, dying. 
to love them, not because of them and the way they are, but to love them because that's who he is. Many people want to be pastors. I'm like, dude, you are literally a target. <laughs> you know, you go to the range and they got those flip up targets, those silhouettes that pop up, boom, 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 you know, you might as well just take all those down and just and just let people shoot at you. But here's the weird part about it. Once you start letting people shoot at you, oh, it hurts, it sucks. You wanna quit, you wanna bail. Maybe you do from time to time. Eventually, you get to the point where you just get shot at and hate at and people leave and create all kinds of lies against you. And you just endure, like let the Lord heal you and forgive those people and repent, of course. And then you get to the point where you're just like, I don't wanna say you shoot yourself <laughs> spiritually or whatever, you just, you just you just allow it. You just like, uh. Some people take ministry breaks and then come back and then get shot at more and they're like, okay, let me take a break. But then it, there comes a point where just the Lord just loves on you so much. You repent so much, you forgive so much where you just like, go for it, man. Kind of like our Lord said to, to Peter, right? Go ahead, betray me. Just do what you need to do. Like to Judas, right? Just do it. Just betray me. And they do. Because we first did it too, right? To our Lord. And he grows us out of that. And eventually you're just, you're like him now. And you're just like, go for it. Here's the knife. It stabbed me in the back. Go for it. Go ahead, gossip about me. Go for it. I forgive you. Where you're no longer affected by this world. Right? He's calling us to die, not just figuratively, but literally. Till we're, till we're like Jesus, until we're just like him, until we're literally, literally died, dead. <laughs> and in the end, it's just love. Because that's what I'm seeing now. Like, I see the spirit, it's just like, it's just love. It's all love, right? Love wins in the end. Like, <laughs> like there's nothing the devil could do. <laughs> there's nothing people could do to you anymore. They could whip you. They could lash you. They could hate you. They could shoot you. They could kill you. The devil does everything he can. People do everything they can. They hate you, discredit you. You're just like, you just endure it. There's nothing you could do to me anymore. Now you just have to literally kill me. Amen. That's where I'm at, man. I wouldn't be talking about this if I'm not here. What are you gonna do? Kill me? <laughs> send me to the Lord. Send me to paradise. <laughs> No, you want to keep me here. You want to torch me as long as you can. <laughs> right? Go for it. <laughs> I don't want to say you become numb to it. Because that's not the way of our Lord. That's the way of the devil, right? They become numb to sin. And they continue in it. No. I don't want to say apathetic. Because that's part of it, too. It's like, ah, whatever. <sighs> Because then you become depressed and you're like, there's no hope, no hope, no hope. No, there is hope. You just become love. You look at it and you're like, eh, it is what it is. I wonder that's how our Lord felt, God felt when he looked at his son dying on a cross, right? And his son looked at his father. Abraham looked at Isaac. Isaac looked at Abraham and was like, this, this, this needs to happen. And the son looked at the father like, I'm okay if I die. And the father looked at the son. And he's like, I love you. As he looked at all of us, it's all moving towards love. 
He says, one day, you, you don't know what I'm doing now, but one day you will. One day you're going to understand. And you know what I think that is, personally? Why, God, why? That's how it starts, right? And at the end, you're like, oh, it's love. Till death is swallowed up in victory. You know what that, is, that victory is? Love. You know what that is? You're all forgiven. <laughs> Everyone's forgiven. Nothing the devil could do, nothing we could do that he has not conquered and overcome. The power of his blood. And what is life, right? Why are we here? We are here to experience the victory of the cross. As we look around the world and we see all these people doing evil things and sinful things, even we doing sinful things, as we look at it, we are literally watching the redemption of humanity because we're all headed towards death. But our death is also our and his resurrection. We're watching God redeem the world. The movie's over. Jesus said it's finished. Now it's unfolding before us. We're watching the movie of our lives and the movie of people's lives around us. We're watching the redemption of all humanity. He says, when the Son of Man is lifted up from the world, I too will lift. When I am lifted up from the world, I will draw all people to myself. He's been lifted up 2,000 years ago. And 2,000 years ago, he is drawing all of humanity to himself. Everything that's unfolding is, is him drawing all people to himself reconciling everyone to himself and everyone to one another. We are seeing that through the death and resurrection of our Lord. And the devil, all he's doing and all sinful people are doing, resisting the redemption that's happening right now in you and I, right now in the world. It's happening. It's happening. He's redeeming all all things right in front of our faces. And I think the apostles saw that. And I think the prophets saw that. And I think Isaiah and Jeremiah, they saw the redemption. They saw the end of time. Jo Apostle John saw that. He said, all kingdoms and kings are starting to fall. We're watching the fall of all the kingdoms and the kings. We're watching everything being redeemed. In the flesh and the people in the, in the flesh and the devil are resisting it. They're resisting, they're fighting, they're fighting, they're fighting. Until we're all united back with our Father. Don't pay attention to the news. Don't pay attention to the, the world. It's coming to an end. No, it's not. It's coming to its beginning of redemption. Our death, whether we literally die or he comes back first, is all being redeemed. It's hard to see. Trust me, it is. He showed me some really deep insight in the, in the him, into me, and he revealed this glory, this eternal glory. Then no darkness could not comprehend it, could not overcome it. That he, he, he became my sin. He was me, so to speak, before I was me. He redeemed me fully and through, through in and throughout. He redeemed us in himself. That's what the good news means. We are redeemed, we're forgiven. That even death could not overcome his love, his blood. Man, one day I'm gonna meet Jesus. touch his fingers 
Maybe his feet, his wound. Amen, you too. Thank God for Christ. And that's what the message is. That's what, that's what our Father did. That's what the Son did. That's what the Spirit's working on us to realize is finished. It's finished. And to be a part of the redemption of humanity. He chose us to help, to help. They get to be a part of it. That's cool. <laughs> we look through a mirror dimly, but one day we'll see each other face to face. Amen. in Christ. Bring it on, Satan. <laughs> Bring it on. Till death is swallowed up in victory. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Lord, Abba, God, we thank you for what you've done. We thank you for your son. Thank you for your spirit. We thank you. How great and mighty you are. There is no God, no king, no man like you, Lord. Until all things are brought down, all kingdoms and powers and kings and organizations are brought down. And the son of man, Jesus, the one true king of kings. Lord of Lords is lifted up in that day. In your name, amen. God bless.